Hey, welcome back, Fight Fans. It's another episode of No Standing 8 Boxer Talk Channel. I'm your host, uh, The Bronx Bomber. And I'm here to give you uh, give you my take, my breakdown, my analysis, and my prediction on uh, Spence and Danny Garcia fight coming up this Saturday, December 5th. So I'm excited about this fight. I think it's a major fight for boxing. I think boxing needs this fight. Uh, two of the two of that weight classes and, and, and the sports superstars are going ahead and you know, at it, uh, it was, should be a thrilling match if both fighters bring their A game, uh, which there's no reason to believe based on what I've been watching and uh, have been looking at the news press and uh, the TV shows that uh, I think they're going to be ready. I think we're going to get a special treat on that night. So we're going to start off with uh, Earl Spence. Let's start off with Earl Spence, the junior. And uh, this goes out to all the Spencer Knights and the people that suffer from Spencer Knights. Uh, the boxing, unlike any other sport, fans tend to romanticize and fall in love with the athlete, the fighter. And uh, although I, I don't take nothing, I don't take anything away from Earl Spence. Uh, I think he is one of the top fighters in the sport. He has proven that. Uh, he has all the skills. Uh, and has separated himself as an elite fighter. If you look at my past videos, I talk about good fighters, great fighters, and elite fighters. Uh, when 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 the people say there's level to this, there's levels to this. Uh, that they're talking about that, and Earl Spence Jr. is definitely at the top of boxing at the he's the, at the highest level. Uh, but the Spencer Knights. And the people that suffer from Spenceritis seem to believe that this car accident had no effect on Earl Spence. And I'm here to tell you that I believe it did. It may not have had the physical uh, effect of getting thrown out of a vehicle traveling 60 plus miles per hour while being drunk. Uh, should have had. He's lucky for that. Uh, whatever. If you believe, if you are a spiritual person and you believe in a higher power, whatever higher power was looking out for him, uh, wasn't done with Spence, so he spared him to the point where there was nothing internally wrong with him. But he did suffer some physical injury, as the pictures that were released later show: burns, bruising. I mean, he didn't step in a ring. He didn't even make a public appearance for almost, I think. 30 days uh, after the accident. Uh, he didn't make, he didn't actually step into the ring to almost 90, if I'm not mistaken, days into the accident. And when he did, it hurt. So he suffered something. Uh, psychologically, I think he suffered probably more. And we will not know until fight night. We will not know what Earl Spence we're getting until fight night, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I could take his word at face value, but unfortunately, the type of accident. Uh, and I don't believe that it was more horrific. It looked more horrific than what it was. No, it was horrific, and it was horrific. Uh, so we have yet, as fans, to see how this has really affected him both physically and psychologically. We have not seen, or at least I have not seen, any sparring footage. Uh, we don't know who he's sparring with. We haven't seen seen very little training footage. They only show us what they want us to see. So what really is and what they want us to see are two different things. And remember, they want your money, so they're going to paint a whole different picture. So we don't know what Earl Spence Jr. going to get until fight night. But the Spencer Knights that suffer from Spencer Knights will, le will believe that he's unfazed and that nothing uh, has happened. We're going to get the same old Spence. And we're not going to get the same old Earl Spence. We're going to get a very... We're going to get an effective version of him. Uh, I believe he was he's young enough to have overcome the physical... Uh, trauma that came along with the car accident. 
the psychological trauma, you know, each person's different. And, uh, uh, but we'll see. Uh, but he definitely looks good. He sounds good. He's talking a good game. Uh, and the fact that he did not take a tune-up fight, he went straight into this fight, uh, leads me to believe that uh, uh, he belie- he believes himself. And that's key. Confidence in going into the ring and believing yourself is number one. Uh, so that right there uh, is enough for me to go on and, and, and analyze him as if nothing ever happened because of his confidence and the fact that he's fighting a top fighter. And for those of you that say Danny Garcia is not a top fighter in that division, you're crazy. Okay? Just because he doesn't appeal to you as a person or as a fighter doesn't mean he can A, that he cannot fight, uh, and, and B, that he cannot win this fight. Because I believe he could do both. Uh, but there's certain things that have to happen in order for that for Danny to win this fight. So, Earl Spence Jr., if it's the, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to analyze this fight as if Earl Spence Jr. did not suffer a, an accident because of his confidence, because he's fighting a top uh, elite fighter in the weight class with no tuna fight. So here it goes. Uh, Earl Spence Jr. has obviously the more skill set better skill set than Danny Garcia does. Uh, He does, Earl Spence Jr. does everything well. Okay, he's fast, he's powerful, he has good footwork. Uh, He doesn't really, when when he wants to, he doesn't put put himself in position to get hit. Uh, And and when he wants to, he boxes beautifully. Okay, key word being here, when he wants to. All right, Uh, so all Earl Spence Jr. has to do is beat Earl Spence Jr. tonight. And he'll beat Danny Garcia. That's all he has to do. Is be him. Which him are we going to get? Are we going to get the very smart uh, Errol Spence Jr. is going to put a fight plan together to, t- uh, to take into consideration Danny's counterpunch skills, Danny's accuracy, and use all of his skills combined to put on a beautiful boxer puncher boxing match to beat Danny? Or is he going to get suckered into a brawl like he's done in the past and forego all his boxer skills and go back for, for this trade? Of, of, of punching we don't know we don't know I'm hoping the earlier version of what I predicted of what I said Earl Spence Jr. was Danny Garcia Danny Garcia uh, again top fighter in the Walter Division uh, a world champion and what Danny does well is wins, wins fights that people don't expect him to win okay uh, but he did that at the lighter weight class. When he moved up to Walter Weight, he found it a little tougher uh, to do that. Uh, however, Danny Garcia has never really been, has never, he's lost a fight on paper. But he's never been, been really been out of a fight. I mean, you could argue this either way. Okay, but he came on very strong towards the end of the Thurman fight, which closed that gap significantly, the lead that Thurman had early in the fight. Or he eked out a draw, or he even eked out a win. You can make the argument for all three scenarios. The, the, the. I, I believe it was a split decision between Thurman. Uh, you can make definitely make the argument for that. You could definitely make the argument he did enough to get a draw. You could definitely make the argument that he he may have won by one or two rounds if you watch that fight again. Okay, but and that has become a problem for Danny Garcia in the welterweight division. Okay, he did the same thing with Sean Porter. All right, he you know he was a little bit more aggressive in the Sean Porter fight. Uh, I believe I believe he actually won that fight. So for all intents and purposes, Danny Garcia, in my opinion, should only have one loss, and that's the Keith Thurman loss on his record. Uh, but uh, but I believe he 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 beat Sean Porter. But again, he didn't do anything to separate himself. Especially at the higher weight classes where punches are harder and it's easier because of puncher power to show the judges degrees of separation in between rounds. Okay? And he did not do that with either Keith Thurman or Sean Porter. And that's the problem we have with Danny Garcia. He starts too late. Okay? He is a counter puncher. He is a he's not he doesn't have all the skill sets that that Earl Spence has, but he does well he he's a very Technically sound fighter. He does. He applies the techniques and the signs of boxing by the book. Great jab. Great straight right. Uh, not great. Technical jab. Technical straight right. Technical hooks that find their mark. 
time and time and time and again. Okay, so Danny either beats you with well placed punching, some and and, and it's sometimes so well placed that he just knocks you out. Uh, hasn't happened in the welterweight division yet, but Danny has that kind of uh, combined skill punch of power. He puts certain certain things. Certain, for example, if you put certain uh, chemicals together, you you know you, you you get an explosion, right? Well, if Danny puts certain things together. It leads him to be a harder puncher than what people give him credit for. So, what's going to happen Friday night? Well, if you watch the press conference, uh, I think the more prepared fighter in terms of doing their homework and doing the research is Earl Smith Jr., believe it or not. They went in there and they said it. No, we watched tape on Danny Garcia. We have a fight plan. We have been prepared for this. And then you got Angel Garcia on the flip side. I said, we ain't, I'm not worried about what's going on in, 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 in Earl Smith's camp. We haven't watched no fight footage. We didn't do anything. Uh, and that's concerning to me because that means Danny Garcia is going to go in there with the same fight plan that he's had, that he's bought. I think the Garcias believe uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But it's, but it's broke somewhere. In their minds, they're, they're, like, like Angel said, in my mind... We lost on paper. We didn't lose in the ring. The losses are on paper, and I own them because they're actual losses. But in Angel Garcia's mind, his son didn't lose those fights. So he didn't do anything to change how he prepares for fighters or does anything in the fight plan. And I think going into Earl Sp- the Earl Spence Jr. fight, that's dangerous uh, because of what Earl Spence. And again, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm judging Earl Spence pre-accident. Uh, because of what Earl Spence brings to the table. He could decide to brawl you. He could decide to box you. He could hit you downstairs. He could do upstairs. Both with power. Both with grace. Uh, nothing to the likes of Danny, that Danny has seen yet. Because Keith Thurman's good. I don't believe it's Earl Spence good. And Sean Porter is definitely not Earl Spence good. Uh, but he but he, he gave Earl Spence a tough fight though. And Sean Porter's just game like that. He's going to give anybody a tough fight. So... Yeah, I think for Danny Garcia to win this, to give himself a shot and win in this fight, uh, he should have reached outside, got himself a different trainer, bring in, give him a different look uh, to, to change something. There's something from the transition to the welterweight division that's not letting him climb, supersede that mountain. Okay, it's, 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 he's peaked at the welterweight division. And there's something that's missing in his arsenal for him to surpass it. And I don't think it's going to be any different this Saturday night. Uh, I think Danny Garcia, I think Earl Smith Jr. is going to win by the unanimous decision. Uh, maybe a split, depending on what kind of Danny Garcia we get. Uh, if if Danny Garcia makes the adjustments, if Danny Garcia... Uh, so let me back that up. Uh, I already gave you my permission, but let me tell you why I believe this. So if Danny Garcia, the, key, the keys to, to Danny Garcia's victory... I believe it's to pressure Earl Spence early. Let's see how much this accident has affected him. Let's see what his sparring sessions look like. Let's see what his win looks like. Let's see what his psychological makeup looks like. Okay, he has to go in there and jab his way into the inside and force Earl to fight him. And I think if Danny fights that fight, uh, I think he gives himself a better chance of winning. All right, and Earl's. Uh, keys to victory. He just he he can't go in guns blazing because Danny's a counter puncher. He's a very good one at that, and he's a very accurate puncher. Uh, but then again, he can't lay on the ropes and wait for Danny to attack because he may not attack. So Earl has to be prepared for two Dannys. You got to be prepared for the Danny to try to exploit his injuries if there's any lingering injuries from the car accident, or uh, he's got to have to fight counter counterfighter Danny and in that case he's gonna have to you know pop Danny every so often force Danny to engage make him believe that he's gonna engage and then use angles and move, move out of Danny's way because we all know Danny doesn't have the best footwork so Earl could could exploit that okay so pop shot him make him believe that you're gonna engage into a brawl and then move out of the way use angles and keep him at bay with jabs and long straight rights uh, and don't let him come in so those are the keys to victory for both fighters. 
So if Danny applies his fight plan, I think he will uh, give us a better fight than we expected. And then something unexpected may happen, like Earl Spence may get knocked out, or he may uh, hit Earl more cleanly than ever before and eke out a decision, which I don't think is going to happen. So my prediction is going to be that Earl has done enough homework to fight a guy like Danny Garcia. I believe Earl is not going to be the the brawler slash puncher that we saw against uh, Kell Brook and uh, Sean Porter. Okay, I believe Earl is going to be a little bit more calculated, a little bit more deliberate, and he's going to win by unanimous decision. That's my prediction. Take it to the bank. Uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. The Bronx Bomber, as usual, like, subscribe, share. Uh, leave me some comments on whether you agree or disagree with my analysis breakdown uh, and fight prediction. And I'll see you on Twitter on Fight Night. Peace.